Hey there, welcome back to Sound Just Like a Pro. My name is William and today we're gonna to be comparing and contrasting the F8N by Zoom and the Zoom F8N Pro. Kind of getting uh, the ins and outs of both of them and seeing uh, which one would be better for you. But before we get into that, I wanna give you a free resource. It's an ebook called EQ Basics, Your Blueprint to a Better Mix. And what you're gonna find there is a paint by numbers solution and it completely takes the guesswork out of mixing with equalization. So I wanna give that to you do it just like a pro.com forward slash EQ book. But let's get into the review here. Really, there are not a lot of differences. As you can see, the F8N, the F8N Pro are pretty much identical. They are the same dimensions in every single way. The uh, BNC for time code on the back is in the same place. The battery tray is in the same place. All of the inputs are exactly the same and the outputs are exactly the same. And on this side, all of the inputs are exactly the same. So what is the difference? So the difference that I can tell, aside from physical, um, they are different colors. The F8N is blue and the F8N Pro is this awesome brushed uh, charcoal gray kind of vibe. But where this guy is gonna shine, where the F8N Pro is gonna shine over the F8N is in the 32-bit float recording. And as far as I can tell, that is the only differentiation. What I've been using my F8N for is a run and gun. Um, it's a reality show in which uh, there are four lobs and a boom. And as it turns out, I am the sound mixer, I'm the audio utility, and I'm the boom operator. So we're relying heavily on the auto mix feature, which is kind of a misnomer. The auto mix is not really a mix as in level adjustments. You set the level of each mic, you set the compression of each mic and things like that. Auto mix is really just a fancy word for gate, but it's like a soft gate in which it ramps up and down instead of the hard on, hard off snap that, uh, that a normal gate would be. It reduces the noise floor, so there's less hiss from open mics everywhere, and it seamlessly pulls in and pulls out the microphone uh, uh, as, they're in, as they are in use. So if somebody's not talking for a while, it just knows and it turns it down. So that's cool. But the limitations of this guy in that particular setting, the F8N is limited in that you have to constantly like hold the boom with one arm up here like this and like reach down in your bag and, um, and adjust levels, which is the easy part. But then if somebody starts yelling, if, so, if the conversation gets a little more heavy, then, uh, then you have to go in and hold the boom one-handed and, and go in here and adjust trim, which is a lot more button pushing. It's hitting the, the PFL button and then going to scroll the knob, hit enter, all that stuff, all while holding a boom and not letting it dip down in the shot. So that's super weird um, on the F8N. Uh, and in a perfect world, obviously, um, you don't have that situation because, I mean, there's a separate audio utility and a separate boom op, all that stuff but none of us really live in a perfect world. So that's where the F8N Pro comes in with a 32-bit float. It automatically will compensate for that and give you a lot more headroom in post-production for, for something like that. And you can set it for the quiet times or uh, really set it for the loud times and knowing that you can boost the quiet times uh, later uh, in your mix. And so to me, that is the the shining light of the of the Zoom F8N Pro is that it can do the 32-bit float. And is it worth the extra $150? I mean, I don't know. I mean, how important is your sound? I mean, mine is super important as, as someone who produces professional video for a living, as someone who produces professional audio for a living in a situation where you're live and you can't really do a lot of retakes or whatever, you don't want to be the sound guy that drops the boom and says, oh man, you know, sorry, but you know, my mixer was set to this other thing and then he yelled. So like, we got to do it over again. And then the next take inevitably is going to miss the magic of the moment. And, and it, it, some things are only funny the first time or some things are only good the first time, especially in, in reality, because then people are like, oh, I'm going to embellish that. I'm going to do this. And then it winds up being a different take entirely and you just miss the moment. So something that gives you the peace of mind 
for not having to go back and like be that guy that stops the take or whatever. Um, definitely, definitely that puts you in the F8 and pro territory. So I encourage you to try both if you want. I mean, if you have the means to do so, try both, but I just know I will be getting rid of my F8N and going all in on the F8N Pro. So that's my take on it. And uh, other than that, the functionality is fantastic. They eat batteries really, really terribly. I'm assuming this one will too. I haven't had a chance to use it yet. But going into the uh, LCD screen settings and turning on the power saving mode into the the low backlight, uh, it really saves the day. And turning the brightness down on the screen, this comes out of the box with a brightness of 60. Uh, I can roll mine down to 20. And then when you set the power saving mode, set it where it, uh, after like 15 seconds or whatever, it gets just a little bit more dim. Uh, if you, in the case where you have to run on AA batteries, that is just paramount because if you're running full bright screen, if you're running no power saving mode, you might get an hour and a half or maybe maybe two hours, but safely you'll get an hour and a half out of a set of AA batteries, which is kind of outrageous in the worst way. I run the DC, the external DC in with the Hiroshi connector, and it's, it's just fascinating because that in low power mode, uh, like I was saying, like with the going in where it turns off the screen uh, after a few seconds running the, the Hiroshi battery, like I didn't even turn this off and it lasted eight hours and I lost one volt out of the range. Like the range of this that, that it can run, I have mine set to, to shut off at eight and a half volts and it can run up to 15.8 or something. Um, but I started the day at 15.8 volts on uh, on here, actually on the, on the F8N. Um, in low power mode with the uh, the dimmed screen, with the, the external battery, my voltage went from 15.8 and then eight hours later it was 14.8. So a good battery with good power saving economic settings uh, in either of these devices should last a whole day uh, of filming and, and get you down the road. And, and with this guy with the 32-bit float, I mean, you're, you're setting yourself up for success. You're setting your production up for success. And that's really what we're all going for. We're trying to be as, as good and as professional as we can be with the equipment that we have. So for that, I truly do recommend the F8N Pro. So other than that, definitely uh, check out the, uh, the free EQ. That's do it just like a pro dot com forward slash eq book to get eq basics your blueprint to a better mix i'm giving that to you i want your mixes to be better so happy mixing have a good time get the f8n pro and we'll see you next time